seen more EU flags in Dublin than I've seen your own national flag yeah. over the course of the last couple of days. I can't believe it. So, the job, my view is this is a fundamental change that will sweep out across the world. And when people see, a couple of years from now, just how much better Trump has made the lives of ordinary Americans, then I think there'll be a desire for it everywhere. But, you know, the, the, the new America is completely unhinged on this. I mean, the version of Trump they're telling us this kind of overgrown baby in the White House, they're, they're ignoring the fact that there's a revolution happening under their noses, and they're selling this narrative to the extent that I would say, if you were around Ireland, people are terrified to actually say a word that isn't disparaging of Trump, yeah. except again to a room like this and they get courage from each other and then it's okay. Yeah, well I'm, I'm used to being on my own, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, no, I, mean, I mean look, it's been very difficult for me. I mean, I spent 25 years fighting for what I believed in. After the referendum, I suddenly became reasonably respectable and then I made double the quits on the whole thing by backing Trump. So, it was, you know, it was, it was quite a big risk for me. Um, now, when people, you know, you know, this is the point, isn't it? The point is that the EU globalist politics does nothing for ordinary men and women. That's the point. Okay, so Ireland, like, what do you have to say to Ireland about our situation? Because our situation is bizarre at the moment. I mean, we're, we're actually breaking away from our probably the strongest relationship in the, in the world, economically and otherwise, and we're going to, you know, go into something unknowable, which is possibly well, on its last legs. So many, when you really think about it, so many amazing things have happened over the course of the last 20 years. Just look at the relationship between our two countries over the last 20 years, how it's improved. You know, in every way it's improved, isn't it? The Queen coming to visit, the peace agreement. I mean, we're closer now, we're friendlier now. travel area for all these decades, you know, and there is a, there is a, it's just good to see that a lot of that enmity appears to have gone, and yet, and yet, there is potentially a problem here, isn't there? That if the European Union refused to give Britain a decent trade deal, then Ireland's farmers, particularly, are going to get very badly hurt by this, which is why Varadkar should be arguing in Brussels that whatever happens between the UK and the European Union, an exception has to be made for the Republic of Ireland. And made for historic reasons and for reasons of political sensitivity. So there is, a, there, there is a problem here that Brexit may cause a little bit of a rift between us. I don't want that to happen. If I'm being objective about it, you're in a currency that's completely useless to you. It, doesn't, it, it does nothing for you at all. Um, you join that currency, you halved your interest rates, it, it made the boom, the property boom and bust here, far worse than it had to be. So you're in a currency that's of no use to you. Uh, you you've now become a net contributor to the European Union, and Mr. Varadkar's happy for you to go on paying more and more and more. Um, you haven't got your fishing waters. You're not truly, you're not truly the independent nation that your grandparents' generation strove for, that, to a large extent, I think, has been handed away. Um, and I just think you do a damn sight better running your own affairs with a better, more open kind of politics. And that's what I think. Now look, it's not for me to tell you what to do. All I can tell you, all I can tell you, is that if you get something organized and you contest those European elections, you'll give the establishment the fright of his life and you'll start to change the narrative in this country. You know, just one word of truth that is out there and suddenly everything changes. They thought I was speaking the unspeakable, the BBC and others. Well, maybe I was, because then people started to think the unthinkable and we went from nothing to winning a national referendum. <laughs> has a very painful effect on the public mood. I mean, like in 2010, you know, if we had a movement then, we could have taken, we could have yeah. swept it off everything before us. The problem is that at a time, in Ireland particularly, we have a tendency when things seem to be going well, we have this pseudo prosperity, which we had in the Celtic Tiger years, we're going into it now again. 
and on the face of it, it seems that you know we're in recovery, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it's all about timing, isn't it? Yes, but the point about timing is you have to be organised and mobilised and ready, don't you? And then you know you can't wait for the moment to emerge and then say let's do something because it's too bloody late by then. Um, I look. I think this. I do understand what you say. At the moment, the European Union is not very high on the list of concerns of most Irish people. I understand that. But the reason I talked about the European elections in 15 months' time is twofold. Firstly, people, fewer people vote in European elections. So those who can mobilise behind a cause, the effect of that vote is magnified, point one. Point two, all over Europe, significant numbers of people vote differently in European elections to the way they vote in national elections. It's a bit like an open shot on goal. It's a bit like, you know, we can do what we want here. And I honestly think, I honestly think, because I've seen this all over Europe, I honestly think that a political movement that puts up candidates for those elections in 15 months' time here in Ireland will win seats. And if you win seats, you're part of the big picture. If you win seats, you can start to change the whole narrative. So I think, John, I honestly, hand on heart, the opportunity is there, even in difficult times, because it's a European election, you can still establish a presence, get a more consistent voice, and then when the moment comes, you're ready for it. What about you? What are you on? Uh, <laughs> well, I've got 15 months left as an MEP. I'm still leading a group in the European Parliament. Uh, running UKIP as I did for all those years, if I'm honest with you, took a fairly big toll on everything. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't. I don't think I regret doing it, I don't, I'm pleased I did it, but I've enjoyed life so much more since I stepped down as leader of UKIP. That's <laughs> <laughs> all I can say. I, I was a businessman. I was a businessman. I was in the commodities business, buying and selling copper, aluminium, stuff like that. As I often say to audiences, you know, I can say hand on heart that unlike most politicians, I worked in the private sector for 20 years and I worked damned hard up until lunchtime, every single day. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I was told, I was told, the day I was elected to the European Parliament, in 1999, I was told by Christopher Booker, a, a, a veteran Fleet Street journalist, he's been on the Sunday Telegraph since 1961, Christopher, founding editor of Private Eye, so he's an amazing journalistic figure and friend of mine, a supporter of mine. Um, you know, when UKIP was that big, he was there supporting me. And Booker said to me the day I was elected, he said, young man, because I was then, um, he said, you need to make your mind up. Either you're in politics to be something and to be somebody, or you're in politics because you want to do something. that day I was in politics to do something. I was in politics to change things. I was in politics to shake things up. Um, and so frankly, if Brexit goes through in a reasonable way, I'm done with politics because I've achieved the goal that I had going in. Um, but, but, but if in 18 months time they made an absolute hauling to Brexit, then I'd have to go back and fight the buggers again, won't I? <laughs> Set up the tables here, and then we're going to have a, a panel discussion with uh, 